All right, we will go ahead and get started. Um, as I noted, my name is Tom Lyons. Um, I'll be bringing you through the webinar today, which is going to be centered around the use and setup of divisions within Genesis Cloud. Um, here is our agenda for the webinar today. It will be a quick one here. Um, before we get started, a little bit about Inflow Communications, and then we're gonna jump right into the configuration and how you can use divisions. So who is Inflow Communications? What can we do for you um, from a business standpoint? Um, for the last 11 years, um, we have been focused on contact center and unified communication solutions. We don't branch into other facets of technology, such as networking equipment. We focus solely on the voice experience. Um, as a result, anybody that you talk to in the support um, department will be able to help you out with anything you need um, in regards to your voice platform. We have over 50 employees headquartered in Portland, Oregon, but we are 100% remote and have been since the inception of Inflow Communications. Um, and we currently support over 260,000 seats and over 800 customers nationwide and in many cases worldwide. We operate with speed, urgency, and agility. We want to make sure that we get you as much information as we can as quickly as possible to make sure that your voice application is working exactly the way that your business requires. And we do offer full lifecycle guides to the UC, CC, and CX spaces. Um, here's a quick snippet of some of the customers we support in our customer profile. We do focus on mission critical communications, value our partnerships with strategic decision makers, and we do target the mid-market and enterprise level. As well, here is some of the partners that we work with closely as well. And as always, in your GoToWebinar application, there is a questions box. If you do have any questions as we go through the webinar, go ahead and type those in. I will get to those at the end of the webinar. And if there's anything that I cannot directly answer, I will get that answer to you by the end of the day via email. And so with that, let's go ahead and jump right into it. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to pop open my Genesis Cloud application here, and I'm going to be on the admin page, as you can see on my screen here. Um, what we're going to talk about first is the overall use of divisions and what they're useful for. And then we're going to talk about configuration and also user configuration so that you can have these set up the way that you want. So a division is sort of like a logical container that you can use to group specific items together. So if you have different facets within your organization, different teams that operate independently, or if you just wanna have different site level controls, this is a way that you can actually cluster certain objects so that certain people within your org will have the ability to modify and make changes to those, but others will not. So you can set this up, for example, if you have six different locations, you could set up six different divisions, set up your objects within those divisions, and then set up administrators for those divisions that have access to only the objects within their site would be one way that you could use divisions. In order to get to divisions, it's actually right in people and permissions here. So it's actually on my screen currently right here under people and permissions. You can also always just use the search bar to find it. So if I start typing divisions, it'll pop up here. And I'm going to go ahead and click into this to show you what it looks like. When I click into the divisions tab here, you'll notice there's quite a few that we have built in our sandbox here. Um, and it's going to break out what is in each division. So at a glance, you can see what's actually associated with it. Um, now, every organization will have a home division by default. This comes with your organization when you spin up a Genesis Cloud um, org. Um, and so you will always have that. By default, all of your objects will belong to the home division. The other divisions that you see here are optional divisions that can be built out in order to separate those objects a little bit better for you. Now, these divisions do have the ability to um, be made up to 50 divisions in a particular um, organization. So you can have a maximum of 50, so quite a bit of modular control. And your character limitation for names is all the way out at 500 characters. So you can pretty much make as many divisions as you're probably going to need, and you can name them pretty much anything you want. Now, in each column, you can see what options are available for each division. So you can actually use divisions to separate, separate out your members, your queues, your business and management units, if you're using um, the workforce management protocols within Genesis Cloud, as well as your architect flows, outbound campaigns, contact lists, and DNC lists. So you can actually use this for all of these. And this just separates them out. This doesn't necessarily make, make it so that users in home can't do anything, for example, in the webinar training division, but it gives you the ability to set that up. 
So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna click into the webinar training division here. We created this specifically for this webinar, just for a quick test here. And when I click into it, you'll notice up at the top, all of those different um, items that can be used to assign um, to uh, assign to a division are up at the top. It's telling me the, um, the amount of each one. Right below that, there is an option for reassign. And that does change based on the tab that I'm looking at. So for example, if I wanted to reassign a queue, if I'm clicked on queues, it changes to reassign queue. This allows me to very quickly move a user to the division that I want to have them in as a base. And what this does is this actually, um, in this particular case, would set it up so that the user um, would be moved to the division um, that I'm in, in this particular case, the webinar training. And then for any changes to be made to that user, the person that's making those changes would have to have the ability to make changes to the webinar training division, which we'll be getting to here momentarily. So if I start typing in a name here, You'll see here, we've got quite a few different name, uh, Brian agents in here. This is for a training class internally. If I wanted to um, set up agent six within this division, all I'd have to do is click that name. You can see that agent six is now in that list. Um, if I wanted to remove multiple people, I could actually check the box here and select a new division. Um, this is how you would remove them from a division because you can, you must be a part of a division. You can only be a part of one division, um, meaning you can't be a part of home and webinar training because your user or your object does have to have just one division that it is associated with. So in this particular case, if I wanted to move these guys back to home, I would just select home, hit save. You'll see this will update and it should have moved Brian, Brian agent one. Um, so that may be something going on with their internal tool, um, but this would reassign everybody there. In fact, it did. If you look at the members tab up top, it looks like for some reason, Brian agent one stayed here, but he did get moved out of the division. So that is going to be how you can actually assign people directly to a division. You can also do it from the people tab itself. And we're gonna take a look at this also. Um, so for example here, if I go to people, and once this loads, I will click on Brian agent one again and go to his um, permissions here. There's a couple different things you can do within the people and permissions spot within um, Genesis Cloud that will allow you to not only set up these divisions for your users, but also determine who can make changes for those divisions. So the first piece that we'll look at is division and licenses. Up at the very top, you have a drop down for division. This does exactly the same thing that we were just looking at from the divisions field within the admin portion of Genesis Cloud. So if I were to change this drop down for Brian Agent 1 to webinar training and hit save, once the save is gonna pop me back out to the main view, and you'll see here that the Brian Agent 1 is now shown as under webinar training. So you can make changes one-to-one -one with agents this way. Obviously, if you wanna make changes to multiple agents at one time when you create a division, it's gonna be easier to do it from within the division itself because you're gonna be able to type in names and select the users that you wanna add rather than having to go to each individual user to make those changes. There's a couple other things you can do in here as well, and it has to do with the roles that the user has assigned. So if I click back into Brian Agent 1, you can see the roles that are assigned to this user, and you'll note that he has an employee, a communicate user role, and a pure client user role. Um, and if you look across the columns here, you'll note that there is a division spot, and the division it shows for these is just the home division. Now, if I wanted to make changes for Brian so that he could take a look at other things within the organization, I could change those divisions so that he would be able to see other, other divisions within Genesis Cloud. Now, it wouldn't necessarily pertain to these roles as these roles are mainly for uh, making and receiving calls um, within the system and those are not division dependent. However, if these were admin roles, so let's see if I can actually find an admin here real quick. What is my name in here? Eng engineering login. So let's find you real quick. Engineering. So here's our engineering login here. I can't make any actual changes, but I can show you what I'm talking about here. Um, you'll note here that there are a whole bunch of different roles, including an admin role that's available. 
And you'll notice under divisions, it currently says all divisions. That's because this, this user is set up as a super administrator within our organization and it will have access everywhere. Now let's say though, I wanted the engineering login to only have admin level access to a different division. Um, what I could do is I could click into the bottom piece here. You'll notice that my cursor changes to a text icon when I do that. And it's going to pop up a little drop down here. Now, in this particular case, this is already set up for a to uh, basically grab every division that's created in the future and automatically add those permissions so that the user doesn't have to go in and manually be changed every single time. But to show you what it normally looks like here, I'm going to uncheck this all future divisions box and I'll I'll then leave the uh, drop down there. And you'll notice that there are a bunch of different divisions in here. So we've got dev test one through three, home, roadside assistance, training, and webinar training. This specifies which divisions the admin role for this user can actually affect. Now, if I, for example, took webinar training out of here, and then I saved it, what would happen for this engineering user is they would be able to make admin changes to every other division in the system except that webinar training division. So where this can come in handy is if you want to set up, for example, a group of users that will handle your changes at your different sites, but you only want them to be able to see and make changes to the sites that they're a part of, you can make a division for each site. So for example, maybe we've got offices in New York, Pittsburgh, and Los Angeles. You could make a New York division or just use your home division for that. You could use your then make a Pittsburgh division and a Los Angeles division. And what you would do is a couple different things. You would change your objects, such as your queues, which I will show you in a second. Very easy things, things to do. We're going to use a queue as an example of the options that are available for divisions. Um, you would change the queues for Pittsburgh to belong to the Pittsburgh division. Um, your users in Pittsburgh to belong to the Pittsburgh division. This doesn't change any of the abilities that they currently have. And then from the admin side, you would um, you would locate your administrator account for the Pittsburgh division and then give him the admin roles, but only for that division. So that way he couldn't affect New York or Los Angeles, but he can he can then make changes within his own site. So this would be a good way to make that happen. Now, as far as actually changing things on the fly, such as um, individual queues um, or when you're creating queues, for example, you can do this from those tabs as well. Um, remember, you can actually reassign from the division. So as you make the divisions, you can just add those objects there as well. But if I, for example, look at queues and I look at, let's just do Brian Lab for accounts compatible, sure. Um, in here on the general tab, there's a division. All you have to do is change your division to the one that the queue or what or other object that you're trying to change should be a part of. Hit save. And now that queue will be a part of that division, which will then be affected by the user permissions that you have associated. So in a, in a way, separating and dividing out your um, Genesis Cloud org so that it can operate more efficiently with more efficiently with the right people making the right changes rather than um, everybody having access to everything at the same time. And so with that, that's pretty much it on divisions. It is a very powerful but pretty simple tool. Um, so with that, I would like to open it up to questions to see if we do have anything that is that um, that you guys do have. At this point in time, we don't have any questions. But if um, you guys have any, I'm going to give you guys just a moment or so to see if anything comes through. All right. doesn't look like we have any direct questions. If any of you come up before the end here, I will answer those. But it looks like we are pretty free and clear. Um, if you guys do come up with any questions after the fact, if you just would like some general questions answered about this webinar or um, anything in particular, um, you can always get in touch with us as well. You can give us a call at 844-446-3569 or send us an email at contact at infocommunications.com and we will make sure that we get an answer to the questions that you do have. Um, in addition, we do have a knowledge base on our support uh, portal. If you are familiar with our portal, we do have a knowledge base that um, will answer a lot of very commonly asked questions. If you're interested in any more resources and videos like the webinar that you're a part of right now, definitely check that out. It contains a wealth of information that may prove very useful to you. Awesome. So on that note, my name is Tom Lyons. Again, thank you so much for joining us for this webinar today. We do hope to see you in the future. And as always, I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day.
Thanks, everybody.